Okay, lads, here we are with part two of Ode to the West Wind. And um, this particular video, I'm, I've decided to stick with not only the Musgrave Pencil Company, but also the Jumbo Pencil. And now we're looking at the, the Choo Choo 8500. Isn't that cute? I mean, you know, I just I wish I had an, a, a, a little child again so that I could, um, um, you know, uh, reteach my little child how to write. Uh, but I've given a bunch of these to my daughter. She's 16. I mean, she doesn't appreciate it nearly as much as, uh, you know, I'd like her to, but it's okay. You, you understand that, I'm sure. All right. So, uh, so here we are. Let's just remind ourselves once more of the, uh, of the terza rima here. So we're going to go with the A, B, A, and then lay and bay. So we go B, C, B. Yep. And then what flowers is a C and a D and a C and then a D E D and then of course E E so if I ask you a question about how do how do the um, uh, how do the stanzas each one of the stanzas in Ode to the West Wind how does it end um, what is the terminal poetic form? You are probably going to say something brilliant like rhymed couplet. And the other thing you're going to say to yourself, if I ask, is, okay, so if it ends with a rhymed couplet, then how is it organized in this, uh, in this sonnet form? And it's tercets, of course. Tercets, right? Three-line stanza, tercet. Beautiful. Okay. So, thou, thou, who, didst waken from his summer dream dreams the it's an unstressed syllable blue how about this one right mediterranean where he lay i mean how many how many how often do we get a six syllable word i mean that's a crusher lulled by the coil of his crystalline streams. So what, what's happening here from a figurative language standpoint? And I'm not, I'm not going to go through and, um, uh, you know, and, and do any more of the, um, of the scansion, I don't think. Uh, what am I going to do instead? Let me go ahead and uh, burn down here to a little bit um, better uh, close-up. Autofocus. Doink. Got it? Okay. So we're personifying personification. Uh, so this is personification then, of course, of the ocean. Thou who didst waken from his summer dreams, the blue Mediterranean, where he lay lulled by the coils of his crystalline streams. So your note tells you that uh, that out there in the uh, in the Mediterranean, the currents that flow. Uh, sometimes with a visible difference in color, I can tell you that from personal um, experience that this is the way it looks. Having had the opportunity to uh, to visit Greece once upon a time on a school trip at another school that shall not be named, um, went out to a uh, took a ferry from uh, from Athens out to a uh, to a distant island and got to see it from the top of the uh, from the highest peak on this little island. Uh, I've got pictures that uh, if you're interested, I can show you someday. Okay, all right, so, um, oh, here we go with the uh, in jam line, yep. Beside a pumice isle in Bay's Bay. All right, look at all this. How about that alliteration there? Beside Bay's Bay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and write the alliteration. I think you can probably see this, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, truncate it just to alit. And, and as with most of the sound devices that are at work in this particular poem, um, there's just a good deal of aesthetic quality. Yeah, there's, there's some structural um, elements to it, kind of the architecture of the poem. But for the most part, m most of what Shelley is doing here when it comes to acoustics is it's for aesthetics. Um, and remember that when, when you have um, the, the the sort of acoustic elements that are, are playing together it's designed to uh, to draw the action closer to you so it narrows the distance between what the speaker is describing and the reader's experience yep okay 
Uh, other thing that, that you want to pay attention to is this, how much sibilance there is in the poem. That would be a great quiz question, I'm pretty sure. So let's go ahead and write it here as sibilance. We all know that sibilance is a profusion of repetition of S sounds. Okay, so if we look at the, uh, just let's just look at the sibilance here in in this terse set right here. So beside a pumice isle in Baiz Bay. How about if I circle them like that? That'll be better. Uh, does everybody know what pumice is? No? Okay, well, pumice is a stone. It's volcanic stone, and it is so light that it will float in water. How about that? Uh, it's full of, uh, um, you know, it made bubbles and so forth, and so uh, the bubbles burst, of course, and then uh, it's, like I said, it's a super light stone, but it's also um, used, it's, it's sort of rough, of course, and, and so, you, like, your mom probably has a, a pumice stone maybe somewhere in the crib uh, that she uses to, you know, uh, wear away kind of calluses and that sort of thing. All right? Okay. And saw, I'll circle them from now on, saw in sleep old palaces and towers quivering within the waves in tenser day. All right. So, again, all that sibilance. Absolutely marvelous. Okay? Sibilance. All those S's. And saw in sleep old palaces and towers quivering within the waves in tenser day, all overgrown with azure, moss, and flowers. Azure, we know what azure is? Blue, right? All right. All overgrown with azure, moss, and flowers. Um, and so what is he talking about here? Isn't he talking about the, the bottom of the sea? So we, we know that there's lots of vegetation and so forth at the bottom of the ocean. Okay, so sweet. Yeah, we got to keep going with this. Azure, moss, flowers, so sweet, and scents, faints, picturing them. Thou for whose path the Atlantic's level powers can't escape it. Look at all that. Look at look at all that sibilance. And, and what's it supposed to sound like? Maybe what the hissing of the wind. The hissing of the wind? Probably so. Uh, can I just go ahead and say parenthetically that uh, a woman with her baby just walked by. Uh, it's an African-American woman. She has got the biggest afro I've ever I've seen since the 1970s. It is absolutely fantastic. I wish that I were not doing this so I could go out and tell her how great I think it is. Um, okay, anyway, back to, uh, back to work. All right, so cleave themselves into chasms while far below the sea blooms and the oozy woods which wear. Look at all those Ws. Woods which where some nice alliteration there, right? Oh, how about the W and Uzi? And I'm not talking about that, um, you know, uh, automatic weapon. The sapless foliage of the ocean. No, here we are with more. Uh, look at all those enjambed lines. What did I tell you about enjambment, right? Holy smokes! Look at all the enjambed lines in this in this stanza, huh? Holy macaroni! Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wait, we went from five to six to eight. So the enjambment is increasing. I love it. So this is creating that more breathless quality. Thy voice and suddenly grow gray with fear. So if you read these things aloud, you can't escape all the uh, all the alliteration, all these acoustic devices, and tremble and despoil themselves. Okay, so again, the vegetation at the bottom of the sea that I referenced earlier. Right? Sympathizes with that of the land and the change of seasons. What, what's that an example of? Well, that's a pathetic fallacy, right? Where the, um, uh, where the natural world uh, behaves in sympathy with, uh, with the human world, right? And here we are again. Oh, here. All right. Now, how about this one? Oh. If I were a dead leaf, thou mightest bear... So as in, um, oh, look at this. If I were a cloud, a swift cloud to fly to thee. Well, what do we got there? Uh, I believe that's called anaphora. Quiz question. If I were a dead leaf, thou might spare. If I were a swift cloud to fly to thee. A wave to pant beneath thy power and share. Look at all that. Right? Pant. Power. Even the B in beneath. Lots of plosives. Okay, so the ex the expiration of breath that, that's done when it's held back by force, 
Uh, this is what plosives are uh, from a linguistic standpoint. Uh, the impulse of thy strength, only less free than thou. Oh, uncontrollable. Uncontrollable. Nice five beat, line, beat uh, uh, word there. Than thou, oh, uncontrollable. If even I were as in my boyhood and could be uh, the impulse of thy strength only less free. All right, now, reminder, a line that ends in a stressed syllable is what? Masculine ending. One that ends in an unstressed syllable, feminine ending. Lots of guys miss that uh, on the quiz today. Uh, let's make sure that you lock that into the old memory bank, okay? Uh, okay, so, notice here. If I were a dead leaf, thou mightest bear. So this is a really interesting idea. It's the antithesis of personification here. The speaker is, is asking to make himself non-human. If he does so, then he, it, it's that, remember we talk about the fact that, that romantic poetry is, uh, a lot of its ambition is to narrow the gap between the human and the natural world. So what better way in, in, than, than instead of bringing the natural world into the human world is to make one closer to nature by become, becoming part of nature. Uh, great idea. Okay, so... Um, the comrade of thy wanderings over heaven. So if, if I could be, like, as I was in a child, over heaven, well, what's happening there, right? We know that's metonymy. Right? Metonymy. As then when to outstrip thy skyey speed. Skyey. That's a tough word to say. Skyey speed. Scarce seemed a vision I would ne'er have striven. How, yeah, I, I got I to gotta point all this out, look. Sky speed scarce seemed all right so we got the the s sound in scarce seemed a vision and it's I'm just gonna put a box there would ne'er have striven so in in close proximity it doesn't always have to be in the same line uh, sometimes it's it's uh, again just in close proximity so all those s's more sibilance as thus with thee in prayer and my sore need oh lift me as a wave a leaf a cloud uh oh look at that. What's that called? Ascenditon. All right, so that means without. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna burn in here so you can see it better. All right. Ascenditon. That means that you've got items in a series without uh, the uh, the terminal conjunction. And what's the effect of ascenditon? It speeds things up. Polysyndeton slows things down. Asyndeton speeds things up. If I'm you, I'm writing this down because it's probably going to make an appearance on the quiz tomorrow. And so many of you, almost all of you, did so much better on the quiz today because you've been watching Uncle Joe's videos. All right. I fall upon the thorns of life. I bleed. And that, there's just so, that, that's just almost an entirely... Uh, spondaic line. I fall upon the thorns of life. I bleed. Look at that. Whew. Okay. I bleed. A heavy weight of ours has chained and bowed one two like thee. Yeah, it, it, it's the it's the, uh, the sort of the ethereal nature that the, the West Wind's been around forever. Tameless and swift and proud. Now, it, it's it's nice. He puts these commas here. In this case, to slow you down a little bit more than you would even with the, just the basic polysyndeton. Okay? All right. Now, notice something something about this. Look at this. All right? What happened in this um, uh, in this one stanza? What's uh, what's different? How are the you know one of these things like like on Sesame Street? One of these things is not like the other. The way that this stanza ends is not the way it ended up here with what. Oh, here. Huh. I wonder what's going on there. All right. Let's flip on over. Last stanza. See if we can knock this out under the 20-minute mark. All right. Here we go. Make me thy liar. Make me thy liar. All right. So uh, what kind of liar are we talking about? Well, we're talking about the same kind of liar that made an appearance in mutability. Remember, it's that um, 
what's known, I think, in, in your note, it's the Aeolian lyre. So it's the uh, otherwise known as a as a wind harp. And I was really hoping that the wind would stay up here because I've got a, a wind chime out front of my uh, uh, front door here. And I was going to open the, the door so that you could hear it. Uh, but, oh well. Okay, so uh, let's just, uh, as a reminder, let's go ahead and do the terza rima. Is, own, harmonies. Uh-oh, what do we got there? Slant rhyme. Hey, don't be surprised. Uh, don't be surprised. I'm, I'm going to show you something here real quick. Own, tone. We've got a B. Fierce is a C, and then one is a B. Slant B. Universe, fierce. Oh, man, look at all this that's happening here. The C, slant C. Birth, oh, I got a D. And then verse, so we're still with a slant C, because remember, we're rhyming off fierce. Hearth, up oh, birth and hearth. Check this out. Can you see what he's doing here? Slant D, mankind, E. And then earth, I mean, birth, hearth, and earth, so we're back to regular D. And then mankind, wind, slant E, and then behind. Look, homies, this is probably what's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to say you're going to have uh, to write the rhyme scheme for the fifth stanza. And if you're doing it, you're going to write it like this. You're going to go A, B, slant A. B, C, slant B, slant C, D, slant C, slant D, E, D, slant E, and E. Now look, I, I shouldn't have to remind you of this because two people missed it today on the quiz, which just drives me insane. When you are designating the rhyme scheme, you are using lowercase letters. The only time you use uppercase letters is when you are designating a refrain line. And a refrain line, of course, is one that repeats exactly. Mostly exactly. Like the, the Villanelle, I think I told you, is a poetic form. Is one that um, it uses uh, an array of different uh, poetic forms. So when we're talking about form, remember, not only are we talking about like the names of types of poems like, you know, sonnet and villanelle and ode and this sort of thing, but it's also the stanzaic forms that we're talking about. Okay? So uh, make sure that you remember when I when I talk about form, I'm talking about stuff like the stanzas and the um, uh, and the architecture in, into which the poem has been arranged. Okay, so so here in the end. Again, still speaking, we're still in apostrophe. Make me thy lyre, even as the forest is. What a great image. Uh, so he wants that. The, so the wind blows through the forest, okay, and and the and the boughs of the trees and the leaves and uh, and the, and the pine needles and everything. Uh, they all, you know, sound is is generated off of those things so notice the, the the image echo of if the lyre which is is generally stuff that's it's like hanging down right so if it's the um you know so if i've got a all right if i've got a wind chime out there and i got the stuff hanging down all right different lengths and different widths all right super long here okay and so as it's hanging down look at that great drawing uh so as it's hanging down i better uh, autofocus that so as it's hanging down and they're knocking against each other, then they're making music, okay? And it's, it's semi-random music because each one of these little uh, guys is going to be uh, tuned to uh, uh, to one that's like it. Let me get one in the background, okay? And how about that? Perfect. Uh, art students, uh, be excited about what I just did there for you. Okay, there we go. Uh, and the wind is going to, of course, blow through it like this, right? And make it, uh, make it move, make music. All right, make me thy lyre even as the forest is. What if my leaves are falling like its own? Uh-oh, sounds like we've got a little mortality issue going on here, don't we? What if my leaves are falling like its own? The tumult of thy mighty harmonies will take from both a deep autumnal tone. Images of decline, sweet though in sadness. All right, here we go. What's happening here? Sweet though, what, 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 kind, of, what kind of figurative language are we talking about? Is that a paradox? Methinks it is. Be thou, spirit, fierce, my spirit. Be thou, spirit, fierce, my spirit. So he's asking the west wind to uh, to basically come into him, right? The, remember the inspiration thing? 
come into him and make him a, a fierce spirit. Be thou me, impetuous one. Listen to that. Be thou me. Be? Got the internal rhyme? Isn't that internal rhyme? Be thou me? Man, that's a, that would be a great quiz question. Okay, right? Look, look how I'm going to mark it down here. Quiz question. Internal rhyme. Beautiful. Internal rhyme. Be thou me, impetuous one. Drive my dead thoughts over the universe. This, look at all this rebirth that's, that he's trying to make happen here. Like withered leaves to quicken a new birth. Ah, just like he says. All right. So secondary, the, the note tells you that, that the leaves may be uh, not, not merely the leaves like on a tree, but like leaves in a book. Like, look at this. All right, these guys here, right? Okay. And by the incantation of this verse incantation of this verse the terza rima right that that the the interlocking rhyme okay uh, plus combined with the with the largely iambic rhythm so that chain rhyme and the iambic rhythm it's it's like an incantation what's an incantation something that repeats itself so the rhyme repeats the meter repeats scatter as from an unextinguished hearth, ashes and sparks. Look at all that. Hearth, ashes and sparks. My words among mankind. Oh, here he is. As a poet, he wants his words, the, the, the poetic words, like this thing we're reading here. Okay? Mission accomplished, um, you know, Percy. Among mankind, be through my lips to unawakened earth, the trumpet of prophecy. Holy smokes, he has great ambitions. O oh, wind, if winter comes, can spring be far behind? Fabulous. What, what, a, what a, a beautifully optimistic and upbeat way to end this poem. If winter comes, can spring be far behind? So look on the bright side, boys, just like we're looking on the bright side here in the midst of, uh, of COVID-19. Uh, we empty a nostril at COVID-19 uh, because we are looking forward to the time when we can all get back together and, uh, and talk about poetry there in Upper School Classroom 105. All right, so uh, this, by the way, this line here is, is maybe one of Shelley's most quoted lines, one of the most quoted lines uh, in English, uh, quite frankly. If winter comes, can spring be far behind? Okay, uh, let's see. Last thing I'll do here is, um, how about if we do the um, just one quick unpacking um, so drive my dead thoughts over the universe like wizard, withered leaves to quicken a new birth. So if the tenor is speaker's dead thoughts, right? Speaker's dead thoughts. Vehicle then, of course, is what? Withered leaves. And as the as the note says. We're talking about like the like my old poetry, maybe that was uh, was not quite as great. Okay, with your leaves, so it could be the leaves of the, of the tree uh, that that are dead, and they're now going to be replaced by by the new leaves, by the verdure of spring. All right, so tenor speaker's dead thoughts, vehicle withered leaves, and then what's the ground? Of course, the ground is the lifeless, the lifeless. Insubstantial Okay, so the things that are lifeless and insubstantial uh, and sort of as like waste products, right? As waste products. Stuff that is no longer uh, of any use to us. Okay, all right, I'm done. Um, so I hope that you took lots of notes because they'll all help you on tomorrow's quiz. And, of course, if you have questions, reach out to me, and I'll see you sort of tomorrow.